I asked her why Israel's gun licensing laws are being loosened and why she thinks that won't make the situation even worse. What the government is doing is basically allowing just the people that already have a license, people that are trained, are well trained, are part of security and defense forces, just to carry their guns in order to, you know, prevent um, this horrific kind of, uh, no, you, you know, terror violence. You're going to shoot somebody. We're not going to hand out guns. I mean, just to make it sure and clear. Okay, if you've got a gun. You're going to. You only have a gun to shoot somebody. No, but we have guns in order to defend ourselves. Many people in Israel, as you know, we have... But how do you defend yourself? No, like just, to just, to somebody? no just to explain how the Israeli system works. We have a very strict gun laws, mm -hmm. and the people that are allowed to carry guns are people that are trained in our security systems, because many people, as you know, in Israel work on security work. Well, that was Israel's ambassador to the UK speaking to me yesterday. Today, joined by the head of the Palestinian mission to the UK, Hussam Zomlot. Hi, it's good to see you. Thanks for joining us. You saw that interview. What were your thoughts? That interview with the Israeli ambassador was really very regrettable. She got away with sheer misinformation and cheap uh, propaganda. She, she, she failed to mention that the incident in Jerusalem happened in an illegal settlement and that it is squarely the responsibility of the Israeli government to send their citizens to uh, practice illegality. It's very well defined according to international law to be a war crime. And all that she mentioned about Jews being murdered in Britain, British Jews drawing that uh, parallels, uh, uh, accusing us of being anti-Semite is really a new level, a completely new level of propaganda and Hasbara. Our issue is not with the identity of our oppressors. Our issue, Kay, is the fact of our oppression that has lasted for a long time. We have no issue with the Jewish people. In fact, the most vocal advocates for Palestinian rights are British Jews or American Jews. So she got away with murder, really, and claiming that destroying, demolishing people's houses is not a war crime, claiming that they are arming people to defend themselves, did she present how many Palestinians were killed by these colonial settlers? The rampage they are doing in Hebron, in Nablus, in Jenin, in Jerusalem, everywhere. Did she mention the many of them who have not been brought to justice until today? Did she mention that the grandfather of the young man who committed that act in Jerusalem was murdered by an Israeli settler in Jerusalem and until today did not face justice because the state and the apparatus of Israel completely let all these murderers get away with murder. It's very unfortunate that even the headline of today is Middle East violence, as if there is some sort of symmetry. There is only one side, a military occupation that has lasted for 55 years, that goes and wreak havoc every single day, raids refugee camps like Jenin only a few days ago, use heavy artillery, uh, hand grenades, rockets, uh, 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 what have you, killing 10, including a 61-year-old grandmother who was just praying in her home. And she sits here and she tells you Israel does not kill innocent people. How about the 230 who were killed only last okay. year? Okay. How about the 35? How about a teacher, a school teacher in Jenin only two weeks ago? Let me ask you some questions. Who was, Let uh, me ask you some questions. Who was in his me. home? Let I hear me, I you. Want, who was in his home? If I can ask you some questions, thank you. 15-year-old boy kills seven Israelis, including a newly married couple helping the injured, shot outside a synagogue on Holocaust Memorial Day. Do you condemn that? Every life lost is absolutely a tragedy. And no one works for a non-violent solution to this more than us. Do you condemn it? No, I condemn the origin of all this. That's what needs to be condemned. So you condemned. don't condemn that action? We can sit here until the morning to talk about condemnation. We must stop the cycle of violence. That's what we need to do. And we must visit the root cause of this violence. For many, many years, we have been, and media is guilty of that, is trying to draw some parallels, is, is failing to focus on the actual cause of all this. And then we, we, we start trying to just... Like yesterday, you asked there's violence on both sides. What both sides? What are the both sides? I've just here? given you an illustration. Where are K the both sides? I've just given you an illustration. You know, 
when you go and kill all if these people... If you won't condemn it, will you at least send uh, condolences to the families of those that We died? have been... The Palestinian people and leadership have been doing that all along and have been expected, expected not only to do that, but to provide protection to our own jailers, our own occupiers, colonizers, besiegers. And we have been doing that all along. What we are trying to say now, because it's long past time, let's call a spade a spade. Let's hit it on the head. This situation has lasted for too long. The people, the Israeli army killed in Jenin refugee camp are already refugees who were ethnically cleansed from their homes and towns 75 years ago. So they, since 67, been under military occupation. They are visited by the settler violence once in a while around their territory. And this is a situation that needs to change. So without keep saying that Israel's occupation has got to end, that the Palestinian people has to achieve their freedom, that a new Palestinian generation is born without occupation and colonization and apartheid, a system of segregation and the sheer racism that comes our way from this new government and all the governments before it. Now they want to arm uh, the uh, uh, more arming the illegal Okay, so settlers. what do you say to those that suggest that many of the Palestinians that have been killed over the past year have been shot as they tried to attack Israeli soldiers? Say it again, okay. I will, most certainly. Many of the Palestinians, this is the allegation levelled against the Palestinians, killed over the last year, have been shot as they tried to attack Israeli soldiers. That's not true. I mean, go to the UN. I'll ask you one question, Kay. Why do you think Israel is so adamantly opposing our quest to go to the ICC or the ICJ, that's the International Court of Justice, the highest judicial, international judicial, if they have nothing to hide, why are they opposing it? Why they use their friends, the US and the UK, to block us from using these venues? Because Israel knows that it commits war crimes and crimes against humanity on a daily basis. Because Israel knows that it is engaged in the most horrific oppression of a nation for 75 years. Because Israel knows that every act it does is an act of collective punishment. Because Israel knows that any judge in the world, including British judges, will indict them and will accuse them of war crimes repeatedly. And this brings me to the question about, you know, local dynamics are very depressing, Kay, very depressing. Yesterday, Secretary of State Blinken, U.S. Mm -hmm. Secretary of State, said shrinking scope of hope. He's right. And he said all the right things, but the U.S. and the U.K. are doing the wrong things, and many other Western uh, actors. You know, when international rules are tested, the international rules that the UK and the US has built after the Second World War. Yesterday I was in the Methodist Church where the first General Assembly, Assembly was, was convened. You played a major role. These rules are tested, Kay, when it is to be applied on your friend. On your friend, not on your foe. Before this program, I saw your headlines about Ukraine. Ukraine resistance, right? Because Russia has invaded Ukraine because there is a military occupation and annexation. The UK recognizes Israel's presence in the occupied territories as occupation and annexation. Okay. Why, why is it? No, 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 let me ask you this question. No, 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 listen. Why is it? No, why I is it that. I cannot give you a soapbox. Why, so why, I'm asking why, you questions. Why, why, I've invited why, you on to ask you why, questions. If you could but, answer them, I would really appreciate it. Why, if you're not in, encouraging violence um, amongst uh, those uh, in the Palestinian community, what are you doing? to try to stop it? We, we, we've spent a, a generation's life, my generation, trying to make peace. We've signed the Oslo Accords. We have recognized the state of Israel. Israel never recognized us. We have complied to the dot to every single provision of international law and of the signed agreements until today. And since we signed the agreement, Israel has wreaked havoc in every single agreement we have signed, every one of them. And now the new government is in your face, in our face, saying that they will have the state of Israel from the river to the sea and they will accelerate building the illegal colonial settlements in the occupied territories, i.e. they will never implement the two-state solution. So the question is what the international community is going to do about it. While the U.S. is arming the Ukrainian resistance, the U.S. and the U.K. are arming the occupier in our side, okay. are arming the ones who are convene, you know, who are actually involved in the annexation okay, of illegal territory. How much support does the Palestinian Authority have locally, do you think? Because uh, my team on the ground are saying that they don't feel that they're being looked after uh, by the Palestinian leaders. How will you address that? Well, we, we have to find a solution because the Palestinian Authority was established 30 
years ago, almost, in 1993-94, to actually deliver to the Palestinian people a state, independence, sovereignty. That didn't happen because Israel has absolutely reneged on every agreement uh, we made. The PA was meant to be the nucleus of the state uh, to come, but Israel has been in utter full control of the occupied territories, committing all the crimes that we have just mentioned. So Israel is sol solely responsible on all these situations, and it has to come up with solutions. Do you think there will be more violence in Jerusalem before you find a way to peace? I hope not. I pray not. Remember, we are at the receiving end. Violence is exercised against us. Uh, both ways. Look, look, both look, ways. Look, look at, I've just given you an look illustration. At, look, look at the numbers. You know what's the difference? The difference is when hundreds of Palestinians are killed, I, could, I don't get invited to international media. No attention. Last year, 230. This month, last month, I'm sorry, January, 35 Palestinians were killed. I get invited when Israelis are harmed. You're always are welcome on the show. When Israelis are harmed. No, I'm not. The last time I've I was... I've just told you you are. Then, OK, I, ho I hope so. I hope so. But the key part, Kay, is that media has got to portray the situation as it is. It is an oppressive regime that lasted for 75 years, a military occupation that has got to end, and people's right to resist okay. the illegalities. OK, we'll come back soon. Uh, you'd be very welcome. Thank you very much indeed for joining us.